for joining the podcast. For you awkward insurance people, once again, we get to have so much fun talking to each one of our guests, and we only want to bring what connects with you the most. Our Awkward Insurance Facebook group is the place to tell us what you like, what you don't, and what you'd like to hear next. So pop on over there and hang out with us. Co-host today is Ashley Fitzsimmons. I am so excited to see your face today. Where are you at right now? I am in Niagara Falls right now, but in the New York side, not the like real side. Like the what's the difference? I've never been. <laughs> yeah, well, how about this? Listen, geography and like math were not my thing. I guess I guess a lot of stuff in school really wasn't my thing except for socializing, but I didn't realize that there were multiple like falls. Like I assumed that I'm going to be able to see the real big fall from the New York side, same as I saw as a kid on the Canada side. Right. Somebody says if they're in Niagara Falls, I'm thinking you're like in the waterfall. Exactly. Yeah. So no, I texted my mom like, mom, uh, this doesn't seem as big as it used to be when I was a little kid. And she's like, because you're looking at the wrong side. So you're looking at the wrong side. So you're in Niagara Falls. What are you doing in New York? I am up here for the Big Eye Education Convocation. It's my first year this year. All of the uh, Big Eye Education Directors from across the country, a bunch of them are here. We all get together to collaborate. I'll tell you what, I'm I'm bummed I missed it last year because of COVID and everything that was happening. But the first meeting right off the bat yesterday, like I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It was just, it was amazing. And it really made me miss the collaboration at events that I used to get with agents when I was on the agency side. It was just so good. And, you know, I made so many great connections. And after this, I'm going to head back over to lunch and continue that, that networking and also playing craps tonight. What gave you goosebumps? Just all of the idea sharing. Like it's, it's just so true. It's cheesy, but like, we really are better together. Like on the agency side of things, there was never an agent I didn't get along with. There was, okay, there was one, but outside of that, like, you know, the guys down the street, they're doing the same thing as you. They have the same thing in mind. They want to help people. If I'm going to lose business to somebody it's probably because I'm doing something wrong and I want to learn from that. And that's the same thing here. You know, what's, what are other associations doing that we're not doing and what are we doing that we can collaborate on to help them? It's just, let's all find what we're good at and then share it and not try to be like, I'm just Ohio. Right. I don't see any other states around me. That is one thing that I really love about the insurance industry is that as much as we're competitors and we, you know, grab up market share where we can. We are also collaborators and we share where we can too, which kind of is a great little segue. I didn't see that coming. Kind of a great little segue into who our guest is today because I met him at an industry event for him. I was there to teach a three-hour CE for their event as well as bring the podcast into their event. And then producer Mac also taught a little intro to podcasting at their event as well. So Jordan Burns is our guest today, and he's going to bring all the teasing and all the fun. We may not actually even get anywhere in this podcast because I'm sure he's just going to nitpick at everything because that's what he did when I was in Michigan. So he's a man of many words, and I have no doubt that today's chat will be very eventful. His background is in journalism, restaurant hospitality, and financial advising, and he launched his own agency called Beyond Insurance Group in 2020 and decided to stay. I met him at a Big Eye Michigan Young Agents event in June of 2022. I wrote 2020 on my sheet. I don't know why. So um, I, welcome to the show, Jordan. How are you? Thanks. I'm amazing. Thanks for having me. And I will not nitpick you. Yeah, you I, will. I, don't lie. <laughs> I jumped no. into this meeting and you said, what are you fixing to do? Which, you know, is a question. I- <laughs> so no, in Michigan, I was up there talking with Jordan and we're just having a nice conversation. I think we were even talking about the designations with the National Alliance and you were oh, grilling we me were. trying to get some elevator pitch, you know. And I said something like, I'm fixing to tell you or whatever. And you went, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Where are you from? Like what? No, actually, the question that you asked is what food is your state best known for? And I said, I don't know, like chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy. And you said, that's what I thought, because as soon as you said the word fixin, my mouth started watering because I figured there was some sort of southern food in there or something. So, yes, you will nitpick. I have no doubt. All I thought about was like Paula Dean and her fixing to cook something good and melting the whole stick of butter and making gravy. <laughs> when you said fixing, oh, my Lord, I was ready. 
Okay, here's another. Here, I have a question. My husband and I had to reach out to one of his colleagues to figure this out because I was trying to write some things on social media about people from Michigan. So we're called Arkansans. What are people from Michigan called? Michiganders. Okay, because I came up with Michiganites until we reached out to somebody from Michigan. It was Michigan, a Misha water, a Michigander. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, Michigander. Why? Well, because we just gander at everything, I guess, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we stare off into the water since we have I so can, much of it. I can see that. As we were driving up to the venue, I was like, oh, look at the little baby Christmas trees and look at this and look at that. And even on the way up there, okay, again, I don't travel too far north of the Mason Dixon line, hardly ever, right? So this is a new, like this Northern thing was new for me. So we're driving, I'm driving and I'm from the South again, remember, and we're driving and I see a sign and I was like, oh, look, it's a jet ski crossing. And then of course my, my fellow car mates were like, Dustin, that's probably a snowmobile. They don't have jet skis crossing the roads up here. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> like, is, that's- it looked like a freaking jet and because I'm from the South and my immediate like recognition was a jet ski. Yeah, it showed like I have gray hair, but that truly showed my blonde at that moment. And I'm not afraid to admit it. It's okay. If you live in the UP, they call it sleds. I call it a sled. What's like a if UP? you live in. So, the, so, okay. So there's the hand Michigan. Oh, we got the hand and then thing there's going. Like the, then there's like the bunny rabbit above. They call that the UP. That's the upper peninsula, even though it's connected to Wisconsin. And got it. It, they're symbols of that UP as a, as a snowmobile, as a sled. So they call it sled. And they do sled racing, and they, they, there's, there's lanes for it all up and down the expressway, the trails. They go through golf courses with them. They, you know, yeah. They love them. All right. Let's stop talking about Michigan and everything else. I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today. I've got a couple of questions. Hopefully, Ash Fitz will find some questions along the way because there was no prep for this particular episode. <laughs> nor should there be. No, Ash, I don't think we need this. <laughs> as soon as Jordan came on, I'm like, this is going to be a good one. This, oh, I, mean, yeah. I don't even know if we're going to talk about insurance, but it'll be good. <laughs> That's it. Buckle up. Here we go. So let's start with your background a little bit first, because I think that's always an interesting topic, particularly since we do have some high school and college kids that listen to the podcast. And there's, I mean, there's like no start to an insurance journey. You just got to jump in a lot of the time. So your background, you started in journalism, which is why you talk so daggum much. So I can see that going. Let's start there. Okay. So I went to school for journalism and theater. I wanted to be, I want, you know what I wanted to be, Dustin, since we're starting there? I wanted to be the host of The Price is Right. When Bob Barker were to pass, Jordan Burns was going to take over. And literally, that's why I chose those two degrees. I can see that. And I scheduled every college class around it. So that's what I wanted to do. I wrote for the news for two years for our local news station, right? Our CBS affiliate. I wrote for them for two years. And I looked down the line of everyone in that news station, and they were miserable. From the cameraman to the news anchor to the weatherman, everybody was miserable. I thought, why stay in this industry if you're all miserable? So I got out of that and went back into restaurants and events where I paid my way through college. You didn't want to like be the change agent for the media industry and be like, let's bring some lively Jordan to the media world? That's where I thought it was going. Yeah, me too. I mean, like he just quit. (laughs) No, I tried. I made tapes. I went out and I, I pitched different ideas for... Jordan's Jury. I tried to get a whole website series going. I did a bu- I, I shockingly did a bunch. It was on my days off. I would go out there and do my own reel for my resume and to pitch different stuff for the website. I tried. I tried. That's fair. Hey, it's hard to change an industry. Yeah, for sure. So you went back to the restaurant hospitality industry. So really your journey started in restaurant hospitality rather than journalism. Tell us about that. So I went back to, so my whole way through college, you know, I, I first job, you can either work at, in the state of Michigan, you work at Meyer, McDonald's, or a restaurant. Is Meyer a, like, grocery chain, I'm guessing? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, it's yeah. like regions, I'm discovering, have their own preference for grocery chains. Like, down in Texas, it's the H-E-B. Here in Arkansas, it's Kroger or Walmart, obviously. Kroger is considered more high-end than Walmart, though. What is it in Ohio, Ashley? Ohio's Kroger Giant Eagle. Pennsylvania is Wegmans, and that's the shit. (laughs) 
So in Michigan, it's either Meyer or Kroger. Meyer's like our local Walmart in equivalents, and then Kroger's more your grocery store. So I started in in restaurants, worked my way all the way up to assistant manager, but I didn't want to go into restaurants. I wanted to get out of it. So you went you went back to the restaurant business to get out of the restaurant business? Nope. I went back to the restaurant business to get out of journalism. Okay. While I figured everything out. Moved to I went to Utah, a matter of fact, at Bonsteron. My brother was a culinary student in the CIA and he was doing a externship in Utah. So I went to Utah and ran a restaurant there in Park City, and I didn't even ski or nothing. But came back to Michigan, was doing banquets and events, which is like weddings, which I fell in love with. I did that for a long time. I met my wife doing it. I was in the event industry. It's cool to be in there. I could see you being like a wedding planner and really yeah. like blowing a place I up. hope yeah. you didn't meet your wife while she was on the altar. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, she was another bride, and I, I snatched her. No, I'm kidding. That was Real life terrible. runaway bride. You know what I never had? You know what I never had? I never had a bride or groom split the day of. That was a big, that was, I was nervous for that. Right? You see it in the movies, you see it, mm-hmm. and it never, it, that, not, that never happened. I did meet my wife. She was the, the, the gorgeous bartender upstairs, and the, re- the banquet hall was downstairs. And, uh, and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. And then you got into finance. So you got out of the hospitality industry. I can only imagine because it's really grueling. I was in the hospitality industry for a little while too, in food and beverage even. So, I mean, we've got some similarities there and it's, it's a lot, like you're there a lot. And I mean, so I ended up getting into insurance because of a conference that was being held at my hotel and somebody kind of drug me into it, you know? So how did you move from hospitality into finance and then into insurance? So my wife sat me down crying because I was working till two in the morning. She was working nine to five. And she's like, listen, if you want to start a family, we don't even see each other. We're like ships passing in the night. So I'm like, look, I can find a new career. I can't find a new you. So don't move. And I went to, I looked at the golf course. I'm not going to lie to you. I looked at the golf course and said, okay, who has time to golf on a weekday? There's doctors, there's lawyers, right? There's financial planners, there's insurance. And I thought, okay, I could do insurance. Isn't that how everybody starts out? They're like, oh, that's easy. I could do insurance. (laughs) (laughs) My cousin Amy was doing it and she said, listen, let's start, you know, let's start in life insurance. I started with life insurance and I was doing it on a part-time basis to I could replace my income and then make the switch. So I started life insurance. I did it for two years. And then I got into, they wanted us to get a financial licensing to become the full financial planner. And I got all my licensing and I did it for six months and I did not love it. It's too, financial advising is so serious of a conversation to have with somebody. You know, it, I'm, I'm more of a, um, a lively person. I want to, I don't want to talk about death and, you know, if you plan for retirement, if you put away for your kids, I want to talk to you about the fun stuff. So so talk to us about the fun stuff of insurance then. Let's go. So here's why I love insurance. I, as, as a person that came from weddings and helping and guiding young couples into planning their wedding, they would spend $40,000 in a day to get married, right? And I'm setting them up for financial failure there. So that was when I got married, right? I don't know what, you know, it, it's... Nowadays, it's crazy. And note to guests, remember that when you give a card, right? How much people are paying per person. I mean, it's people are, you know, we'll get, we can get in that. But so to me, the, the thing that I love is that you're taking people who don't speak the language of insurance and you're guiding them through the process of helping them buy their first home, getting them insurance, making them understand what they need, what they have, what they don't have. And uh, making that dream come true for them. I deal a lot with first-time home buyers, and I love it. I love the experience of it. I love helping them through and guiding them. I mean, then I love growing with their families, right? You're seeing, you know, my son's old enough to drive. We're buying him this vehicle. We're getting a cabin. We're getting a boat. You know, we're getting a golf cart, and you're 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 growing with them. Oh, congratulations! How exciting! You know, I oh, I love your boat. Wow, that's a gorgeous house. I get to look at Zillow homes all day, people in all their different homes that they have and, and what's what's trending. I'm over here choking up right now. I'm I'm literally getting tears in my eyes. I don't know if it's because I was up till 3.30 playing craps, <laughs> but I, I don't know if that's what it is. But like you saying that, 
<laughs> I remember just like being in my family agency and literally watching that progression over generations. Like we had so-and-so's father. And then when I came in the agency, we had the kids that were maybe like the, the kids, they were, you know, adults with almost adult children. And then I watched their kids get married and go off and they would message me and say, hey, I have to, you know, get a personal article floater for my ring. And then they're having kids. And now they're talking about grandparents, like grandkids. And it's just like, it's so cool to see that transition. Like it's, it's so that's awesome. And I mean, first time home buyers, they're going through enough as it is. Like they want somebody that they can trust and that they can talk to and that they they get that gets them. They're throwing a lot of money out there and they're throwing money out there for an intangible product. So when you it's even more important to have that relationship with them. It is. And I, do, you know, I think everyone forgets in insurance the excitement of it. When we, we used to have couples that just got engaged and they would call you to book their wedding. We're, we were over the moon for them because you, they're high. That same high, that same excitement. That adulting, they're buying their first house. They're so excited for it that let's keep the energy going. And then listen, who do they have to trust? They go to their parents, right? And and how much do their parents actually know? And who's their parents going to guide them into? And I try to be that resource for them and say, look, if you were my brother or sister, this is what I would want you to have or know that you'd feel comfortable with and build that peace of mind and then get to watch them enjoy everything. I love it. I really do. And I wanted to be the host of The Price is Right. And I'm doing insurance. And I love it. And my wife thinks it's hilarious how much I love it. I think everybody gets shocked. that Anybody that's not in the insurance industry, when they hear about people that truly enjoy, like you said, I, what did you say initially? I do insurance. Like, what do you do? I do insurance. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you do? Oh, I'm an insurance professional. No, we do insurance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because we don't sell it. I mean, like, yeah, they pay for it. But like, I'm not selling you on it. I'm educating you on it. And if if the price is right for you and the coverage, you're going to go with it. And if it's not, you can go to somebody else that is selling insurance, not doing insurance, because that's not the type of client I want. And that's why when I made the motto for our company, which I love, I just I came up with honesty as our only policy. I'm not here to sell you insurance. I'm here to provide you an honest explanation on the coverages that you need and what's available and for the price, the price of cost. That's it. And I educate and explain the whole thing through. Okay. So let's, let's kind of dive in on that a little bit. So you started an insurance with no experience. When did you start in it? Like what year? Just the simple answer to one year. What year did you start in insurance? I started in life insurance in 2015. 2015. And then you started your agency in 2020. So in five years, you felt comfortable enough to become a business owner in insurance and establish the motto of honesty is our only policy, because the education of what their product was, was more important to you from your business aspect. So in those five years, what built your confidence to get to that point? Frustration, I would say. Because I got my PNC license in 2018. So really, I'd only been doing home and auto for two years. And it was more frustration on policies that people were sending me to compare it against my policy. And how basic they were or how high of deductible they were. And them saying to me, well, wait a minute, why, you know, my guy says this and my guy says that. And I said, well, I'm looking at your policy. Do you know you have a $10,000 deductible? For if you were to make a claim, it's $10,000, which is, you know, 2%, 3%, whatever the answer was of their home replacement cost. And people were astonished that they didn't know that stuff. Right. So the core of what my question is, is, okay, so now you started an insurance in 2005, but you got your PNC license in 2018. For those listening, if you don't know what a PNC license, it's a property and casualty license. So you got that in 2018 and then two years later, because life insurance is different from home and auto or even commercial property, right? So in two years, let's start with the two-year time span. You went from knowing very little about property and casualty coverage because you were in life and health before to in two years wanting to start your own agency with the motto of honesty is our 
only policy. So in two years time, you gained so much confidence that you started out as an entrepreneur. What gave you the confidence? I understand comparing policy coverages and something as simple as a, as a deductible and being able to see the difference between, you know, a $1,000 deductible and a 2% deductible. That's a, that provide that's a tiny bit of education to understand what 2% means versus a flat 1,000, you know, but that's a number that people can really understand. Oh, I'm paying, you know, a thousand rather than you know, on a $100,000 policy, a $2,000 deductible, you know, whatever. So they get that. But where did you get your confidence from to say, I know how to be honest with you about your coverage. I know how to compare your coverage even because coverage comparisons between different policies is not as simple as just looking at the deck page. That's what the consumer might be concerned with. But there's a whole lot more behind that deck page that needs to be considered as well. So you gained so much confidence in two years to start your own agency. Where did you get your confidence from? That's what I'm asking. Where can other people get their confidence from in order in two years time to go from brand new PNC license to I'm owning my own shop? Okay, so that's a great question. So it's two, my answer is two parts for you because one was I took a leap of faith. Two brothers that I go to church with said, hey, we own a real estate company and we own a mortgage company and we're giving away all of our business for insurance. Have you ever considered going into business for yourself in insurance and owning your own agency? And that's where that was my catalyst to go, you know what? I have and I will and I am and why not now? So that's answer part one. But the other part of confidence, we have to be confident in ourselves as agents. We have to know that we know more than our clients do. And we have to be confident in ourselves that if you're doing what's right and you have integrity, that you even know more about what what the other agents are doing that you're comparing against. This is a perfect point that I like to make whenever I can. We have to be confident also in the fact that we aren't going to know everything and we have to be confident enough to tell a client you know what? I don't know that answer. Let me look into it and get back to you because that's going to win you more points than trying to BS them and potentially leave you in an ENO exposure because you are just trying to say, yeah, yeah, you got this. You're good. Like, so I, I think there's something to say about confidence in also knowing what you don't know. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a very confident person. And, and for you, for me to explain, like, where did I get my confidence from? You know, it, that's, I'm confident. With that being said, I didn't know everything about owning my own agency. I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I'd already only done it for two years. So the customer service point of it, the, the PIP change was coming down the line. If you think about it, I launched in May of 2020, PIP, PIP renewal was coming July. So everything I did, I created a process and a procedure and a script for that I went off of. And I just thought about, okay, be honest educate and you know stand by stand by what you're doing and create a system that others can follow and treat people the way you would want to be treated so why did you join an association or an organization like the big eye michigan if you were so confident already <laughs> so i i met a guy dan connor while i was selling insurance and dan i called dan as a resource to say okay dan I've got a client that needs this product and I don't have it. Do you have it? And he says, I do, but you should, you know, let me connect you with this rep for this carrier. And you know what? You should be a part of this and you should, you should come to the big eye and, you know, you need to come and be able to meet the different carriers and other agents and be able to talk to different principals and producers and CSRs and, you know, rub elbows and figure out things and be able to ask other people questions. I think he didn't want to be the only guy who was asking questions too. But I joined and I gained a lot from it. Build your confidence up even more, right? When you have other people that you can lean on and siphon some of their knowledge. Absolutely. And it takes me from being a guy on an email or on an application for a carrier and puts a face that I get to share my story, right? I get to share the story of, of how I started the agency and the partnership with the real estate and the mortgage company. And other carriers are like, okay, so what are you doing? And how'd you grow to, you know, $2 million in two years? Well, 
we have a mortgage company that's joint ventured and it launches with other realtors to create a mortgage franchise for them and nationwide and then beyond insurance writes all the insurance for it and that's a story they listen to and then the, then they get appointed then i get appointed my story's different it's unique it is unique cuz you're still growing and it's you're still it is it's no it's not awkward at all i think anytime uh, it's like the we do insurance uh you know thing somebody i love the way you say that you started in insurance was like you looked at the golf course and you were like who gets to play golf on a weekday? I want to be one of them. And you went through the list. It was like, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, too, is when you're with the big eye, you're seeing, I think here's a cool thing, too, Dustin, is I got to sit down with a gentleman who is the third generation or second generation and hear how, you know, his dad started and and then he took, or his father-in-law started and he took over and he's, He's grooming his family to take over and what it looks like and where he is now and where his book is and where his family is and the legacies of, you know, he's going to his employees, kids' weddings and how many people has he helped over the time. You know, I wasn't born into this industry at all. And I'm thinking about how I'm creating it now for my family and our generations to live on. And, you know, when I hire someone who has a, a you know, a young son, I think about one day I'm going to go to your graduation party and I hope to pay, help you pay your way through college, and I hope to, I hope to really make a difference in not only your mom's life for hiring her, but yours. That's a true story. That's what I think about. Choking up again. <laughs> so I love that you're doing that, and your kids will 100% appreciate it. I um, was the fourth generation in my family agency. They're over 120 years old now, still up and running. And one of the things that I'm most grateful for is I got to work alongside my father, my uncle, my grandmother, and my grandfather for 10 years. And actually, my grandfather just passed away um, two weeks ago at 89. He was the first Fitzsimmons to make it past 80, and he made it to 89. He really set the bar high there, so I got to start getting healthier. But, you know, I remember all of the things he told me when I was in the agency, and that was like such a special thing for me. And it was amazing to see all of the people that came out to say, you know, we love him. He was a great guy. And a lot of them were insurance people that have seen me grow up in the agency over the years. And it's just, it's just, it really is incredible. You meet some incredible people in this industry that are just so genuine and just want to see the best happen for you and for your family. And the difference he made in everyone's lives for choosing mm -hmm. the career of insurance. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my why. You know, Dustin, they talk about you why, got into it why for do you golf go to work? and you're staying for the legacy. <laughs> hey, do you golf? You know, does that even I do. track? Okay, good. Once a year when I come to like the big eye events or the young agents events, that's when I get out there to be able to golf. So do you have time during the day to golf? Since that's the reason why you got into insurance no. was because you picked day golfers. No. So, okay. No. <laughs> because I eventually want, I want to, I eventually want to grow my career to be able to, to do that. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still got a long ways to go. You're just getting started. And I mean, that's the that's the one thing that I love about insurance is our community is huge, but we're so small. Like we know it's like you start to know everybody. You start to just develop like the whole community is your center of influence as a whole. Going to things like the Michigan Young Agents events is where you gain more confidence from. No, Ash, you do a lot, um, or you're actually with the Ohio Insurance Agents Association up there. And so, I mean, that's the whole reason that they're there is to build that confidence, to build that community, to really, you know, take you from, I don't think there's really any other professions or very many other professions that are like legitimate advisorship type professions where we just jump into it with no experience and like from day, like direct writers for instance you see ads everywhere that's like own your own business have a hundred thousand in the first year be your your own owner on day one kind of thing like that there's a there's a path to most other professions to get you there in terms of doctors owning their own practices or lawyers having their practices and now we're just insurance people that jump in and we're like all right well, day one we've got it all worked out right we really don't, but we learn that knowledge as we go. And I think that's where those associations really come into play. I know that's what it was in my career was the big eye here in Arkansas really helped me find a way 
feel like, what did I want to do? Like insurance was just the word insurance when I first started in it. But the big I, the association is really what helped me find a path and figure out what I wanted to do. That's kind of what I was asking for. But you were like, nah, I got all the confidence in the world. I don't need nobody. Oh my, I knew you were going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah, but you said, you said what went off. What, no, you said what made you want to start your own. Yeah, like where did you get all that confidence from? You were just like, I got it all in the world. <laughs> no, but really, I mean, really it went with the, ba- okay, so the backbone of our company is our partnership. Right. And the partnership is with the real estate and the mortgage company who are not only in our community, but are starting different mortgage companies nationwide. So I looked at it like this. Hey, I could one day start my own agency on Main Street, America, right? Or I could get in with this, with with my business partners who I met at church and go, okay, look, I can be the insurance agent in every single mortgage company that we open up, right? So that's like, you know, for for you that know Kroger, it's like being the sushi company in Kroger. It's better to have a sushi sushi counter in every single Kroger than being, you know, the one on on Main Street. Right. Yeah. So your confidence is really found in your community that whether that community is a local community, it's your association community, it's the insurance as a whole community, is you look for strategic partnerships in order to find like your confidence in how you can evolve and grow. I get it. Yeah. See, why can't, see, use that clip right there. Use that part well, of that. We'll edit. Use that recap. <laughs> well, edit all the other stuff I'm just, out. No. <laughs> I'm just confident. <laughs> no, confidence is great. But you, you know, the, another thing too, with the, the big eye and, and that you said it's a community and is, is the, going to those classes and learning from it. And, you know, looking at, looking at ask your grandpa and what he did, and, you know, we had to write down who's our mentor and what does that look like? And is it knowledge? Is it skill? Is it attitude? And coming up with all these different attributes with it. And, and you, what I learned is it isn't knowledge and skill, but it's that right, having the right attitude. And at the end, they said, well, what do you, what do you take from this? And I said, I want to be somebody's mentor, right? I want to be, I want to help build a career for someone else. I want to help guide others. I want to one day grow into that. And that's what you two are doing, by the way. Oh, uh-huh. thanks for that. For real, think about you're mentoring all the agents who need a resource and need guidance and need to know that, look, I'm not the only one out there. No, I met a guy at the Michigan event, like he was six months in and like, give me it all. Tell me it all. Yeah. Let's figure this all out. I mean, like I said, it's like one of the very few professions that you can jump into with no knowledge and be like, day one, I got this. Mm-hmm. But then at some point you're on an island alone. Yeah. And you're wondering, am I the only one that's, am I the only one going through this, right? Am I the only one that's facing this? And that's why, you know, a podcast like yours is really helping them to understand that. I appreciate that, which kind of gives us a great segue into from the Michigan Young Agents event. You heard Max little intro to podcasting. We started off the session with letting just like a quick, like you need a podcast. If you've not thought about it before, start thinking about it now, because this is a great way for you to introduce yourself to the community day one. Like you can start getting out there, even if your motive is not even to sell insurance, you can start getting out there and understanding your community because everybody loves to talk about what they do and themselves. So having a podcast is a great way for insurance agents or any entrepreneur, honestly, to just get to know their community and expand their horizons, their centers of influence. And you kind of reached out to me and was like, hey, because of that, you either joined a podcast or started your own podcast. Which one was it? Joined. Tell us about it. So it's called Leaders Drink Last. And what the purpose is, is just like they, you know, just like the book Leaders Eat Last and or Leaders Finish Last. It's saying, hey, look, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. If you're a leader, you're going to make sure that your whole family is taken care of first. And then in the end, you know, it can be lonely at the top. It can be lonely. You're the last guy to sit down to crack a drink open or, and um, make sure that, you know, you're taking care of everyone first before you get the chance to enjoy yourself. Do you guys shotgun a beer at the end of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or bourbon, whatever you prefer. Okay. Well, I think that was really a great close to the podcast. Jordan, it has been an absolute delight to have you on the podcast today and just kind of walk through your journey and understand your perspective 
Any final words, any words of wisdom for anybody starting an insurance or in insurance and needs some connections, reach out to Jordan. Yeah, reach out to Jordan. Share my information, right? I'll answer questions. I'll help. I'll guide. I've been there, you know? I've launched an independent insurance brokerage with direct carriers versus going to an aggregator, doing, going to, you know, the goose heads or, or stay farm way. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on Awkward Insurance today. I really hope that this friendship continues. Amen. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and listening to another Awkward Insurance conversation. If you haven't already, be sure to join the Awkward Insurance Facebook community. We have an amazing group of people on there. And for more episodes, head over to the National Alliance website at scic.com. Now go forth and be awkward. Toodles. Mm, that's awkward. Ha <laughs> ha